Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers 22. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab. And we're in Moab, it's a little north, still on the other side of the Jordan River, on this side of the Jordan River by Jericho. They're on the east side of the Jordan River. Jericho's on the west. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. 21, and 20, 21 verses 26. And Moab was sore afraid of the people. That's what God told them. People are going to fear them. Because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Fear. If you do what I tell you to do, they're going to fear. They're going to tremble. You're going to go in one way. They're going to be scattered seven, eight ways. And Moab, he's the son of Lot. Their family. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, this company being Israel, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. Totally just remove it. I understand. I believe it was ox. They lick up even the roots or sheep. One of them too, I've been told. And Balak. The son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. So if you can go back, you probably find out in what years Balak was the king. And we'll give you a date. Date here is 1452 B.C. He sent messengers. <laughs> Isn't that funny? What do we call it on a computer today? We call it messaging. Things haven't changed. This messengers here are not, are not electronic buttons. It's people. Therefore unto Balaam, and we'll get into Balaam as we're talking about this, and we'll get into him later. But let's look at Balaam, who he is in chapter 22, before we jump later into Balaam. He's an interesting character. The son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people. So Balaam is the son of Beor, and the place where he's at is at Pethor. And is by a river, the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, Israel. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. You see how many there are? And they abide over against me. They're next to me. They're right near me. And they're going to get, go against me by killing me. Come now. Hurry up. Therefore I pray thee, curse me this people so he's getting Balaam to curse Israel now Genesis 2 12 3 I will curse them that curse you that curse is going to go upon this king Balak according to Genesis 12 3 for they are too mighty for me Pre-adventure, I shall prevail. The only way I'm going to prevail over them is you curse them. Okay? I can't win unless you come. That we may smite them, kill them. Moab wants Israel dead. So Moab is going to hire somebody to curse them. And that, and that I may drive them out of the land. Get rid of them. For I want, have I dear, no, that he whom thou, Balaam, blessed is blessed. 
and he whom thou curses is cursed. Okay, one thing about Balaam. The words around that whoever he bless, they're blessed. Whoever they curse, whoever he curses, excuse me, they are cursed. So Balak says, hey, and the fact is that you can curse people and it works. Come with me and curse these people called Israel. That's the first thing about Balaam. We'll read more. Take verse by verse and look at Balaam. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed from the depart, departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. It's the price tag. It's you're going to divine for us. So we're going to give you the money for divine. What's the reward of divination? Well, if you go see a fortune teller, whatever she charges. If you're going to have somebody come and do a seance, whatever they charge. Somebody who's going to look into the future, whatever they charge. Rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spank unto him the words of Balak. So they tell him everything that what Balak says. And he, Balaam, said unto them, lodge here this night. Okay, stay here tonight. I'll take care of you. And I will bring you word again. As the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, shall speak unto me, <coughs> excuse me, and the princes of Moab bowed with Balaam. Okay, they come, he, he takes care of them, he says, whatever God says, Jehovah, 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 I will speak. That's not small. Small l o o r d, and God came unto Balaam. God came to Balaam. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah of the children of Israel. Now God shows up to Balaam because. Israel are his children, and you are not going to curse them. God has to intervene here because you can't have any fallen gods because Satan would love to curse these people. So God acknowledges the fact is whatever this guy blesses is blessed. Whatever this guy curses is cursed because he steps in and says, hey, let's read on. What men are these with thee? Now, don't you think God knows? It's like God asking Adam, what'd you do? Then he turns to Eve, what'd you do? God knows. God wants to know what we're going to say to him. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zephor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Preventure, I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. Now look, look at what Balaam, he says exactly why those men are there. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Don't go with them and don't curse them. Okay. Balaam rose up in the morning. Morning is a type of second advent. And said unto the princess of Balak, Get you into your land. Get out of here. For the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the Uh oh. God said, Thou shalt not go with them. So he says, Get you in your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave. Okay, that part's good. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. He does not say that in verse 13. You got one-third of the message given to the people of, ba of Balak. God says, don't go with them. Don't curse them. They are blessed. There's three parts in that message. Get out of here. I can't go with you. That's one part of the message. That's one-third. And the princes of Moab rose up. They went unto Balak. And said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Uh, okay, let's look at what Balaam said. Get you into your land for the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, refuses to give me leave. 
Balaam re re refuses to come. Where's God? They only got half the message given to Balak. So verse 15. And Balak said yet again, princes. This is the second time. And more. And more honorable than they. I mean, you got better people and better convincing people. And they can do their job better than the first guys. Better gifts, better rise, whatever. He's loaded it up. And they came to Balaam. And said unto him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, ooh, blank check. You know where you get that expression you found in the Bible? I'll give you half my kingdom. I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. Get over here, will you? For I will promote thee unto very great honor. We'll make a statue for you and give you, give you a, a holiday on your birthday when you're dead. Why do they have holidays or birthdays when you're dead? You don't use birthdays when you're dead. Matter of fact, you don't even use birthdays when you're alive. I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Look at that blank check. When Herod dances and that girl does her hokey pokey half undressed in front of him, he says half, half the kingdom. In other words, if you came up to me and said, give me the entire kingdom, you ain't getting it. I said half. This guy says, I do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Anything you say, I will do. Balaam could walk in and say, okay, you, you want it done? Yeah, I want this entire kingdom of yours, totally mine, forever in my family. That's what it says. I want every cow, every gold, everything you got. I mean, that's a blank check. Therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Now let's look at 75 6. Psalm 75 6. Real quick. Psalm 75 6. Balaam starts off good, but then he gets bad. God shows up. And he does right. I mean, he partially listens to God. Psalm 75 verse 6. For promotion cometh near from the east. All right. From the west. We know these directions, don't we? And from the south. Forgot one. But God is judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Now look at that verse there. Promotion comes from God. And where is God? He's north. We got east, west, south. Where is north? North is God. And he puts it up and he puts it down. Now that's what God told Balaam first. Now Balaam said, God said, I can't go with you. And then the people said, there's no God. Balaam just doesn't want to come. Had Balaam would have been honest to the words to the men before they left, had those men been honest to the words that were given to God that Balaam did not only one third of the message, I wonder what Balak was when he would have heard their God, Jehovah, the God of the Jews, said, No, you can't curse them. And by the way, that God said Balaam can't come here. So when you got messages coming out of churches today, the world of churches today, and they mess with the Bible. Did you see the Bible correction? For what God said, what Balaam said, and what the men of Moab said, they subtracted from the word of God. As modern Bibles do. And look at the mess you're going to get into. Verse 18. 666. Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold. 666 will get you silver and gold. And it will get you houses. I cannot go. Beyond the word of the Lord, capital L, capital O, 
capital R, capital D. Now, that's a mouthful. God already told him, don't go. He didn't go. He's faithful so far. My God. Oh, look at that. Look what Balaam said. My God. To do less or more. Well, you did subtract from the word of God. Verse 13. Notice 13 and 18. 13, you got rebellion against the word of God by giving one third of the message. 18. I'm going to obey God. You, you did it before, Balaam. You didn't give the full message. So we're already starting to see Balaam slip. And we know it's for that gold and silver. And other passages we'll look at later, Lord willing. That blank check got him. So, the word of which, it, which I shall say unto thee, uh, no, wait a minute, hold on, where was I? Verse 19, now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night. Why do you just tell him to leave? That's what it was, that was the message in 13, get out of here. God's not going to listen to you. God's not going to honor this agreement. You came here before, no, go. That I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. He wants more. He wants, he wants God to say, go ahead and go. And you're going to see that in a minute. And God came to Balaam at night and said unto him, If, that's conditional, if the men come to call thee. Hey, we got call and messaging in chapter 22 of Numbers. Rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall thou do. He's holding to what he already said. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord. And God says, okay, you better do what I tell you to do. Now, if those men come and call thee. Yeah, bail me in there. Yeah. All right, come out with us. Let's go. That's what Balaam's looking for. Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. They didn't call him. Man, he got up in the morning. Oh, okay, get my butt going. Let's get dressed, gather some things, jump on my ass. All right, let's go, guys. That's not what God said. He rebelled against God. God said, they come knocking at your door, your bedroom door, wherever you are, and say, let's go, come on, then you can go. Those guys said nothing about it. Now, Balaam is on the road of rebellion. God's anger was kindled because he went. So he's done wrong. The angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. It's going to stop him. That's not where you're supposed to go. It, it looks like God's trying to protect Balaam. He does not want him to go to go to uh, Moab. Because God's already foreseen what he's going to do. Both to ruin Balaam's life and to ruin the children of Israel. God says, no, don't go. The angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. And it involves a, a ass. Stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass. And his two servants were with him. So there were three of them. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. The ass is walking along and there's the angel of the Lord. No one else sees the angel but the ass. And his sword was drawn in his hand. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa.
thou shalt not kill. <laughs> and the ass turned aside out of the way. She goes off. She takes an exit. And went into the field. The field is a type of the world, the Bible says. And Baal smote the ass to turn her unto the way. So he whips her. Gets her back on the road again. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards. There's grapevines. There's a path. Going through the grapevines or going to a grapevine of the vineyards. And they're 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 going down these three guys and they have dum to dum to dum to dum. And a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. So this road has a wall on both sides. Israel is a type of vineyard in the Bible. And Jesus tells us a, a, a parable about the vineyard and a wall and a hedge. It probably smells good. You ever smell ever smell grapes when they're on the vines and all? We had one next to the house I grew up. And that was a beautiful smell. Beautiful grapes, yummy. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, no one else sees her. Animals listen more to God than man does. I am so surprised that God gave His life for man rather than animals. I mean, if I was God, and I'm not, if any creature in this earth I would have given myself for love would be for a dog. You know how much loyalty a dog is? How, how patient a dog is? How, how loving a dog is? I've never seen a dog flip up his middle finger. And I've never seen a dog curse God in Jesus' name. And yet dogs are unclean animals in the Bible. And they don't go to heaven and they just lost a whole bunch of people. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, there were birds that fed Elijah by the commandment of God. Put that in your mouth. Don't you, don't you dare. And see, God didn't have to say, don't you dare. Don't you, don't. He said, take that bread to Elijah. Okay, let's go. Man, God tells them to do something and they disobey. She thrust herself unto the wall. <laughs> And crush Balaam's foot against the wall. Ouch. Remember they wear sandals. Right against the wall. And he smote her again twice. She's trying to tell them we, we ought not to be going further. You say well why did not the whole. Why did not. The angel of the Lord show himself because Balaam's he's on his mood, he's got his mind going. I want gold, I want silver, I want Moab. He ought to stop saying, you know, this two times this this act because the ass is gonna talk and say, We'll get to it in a minute. There's something wrong. This ass is not acting correctly. Verse 26, and the angel of the Lord went further. He's still going. Nothing stopping him to go in Moab. And stood in a narrow place. Does that sound familiar? Jesus is the straight gate. There's no other way. Life. <laughs> Truth. The angel stood. The angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. Where was no way to turn neither to the right hand or to the left hand. Whatever this road is now, that's it. That, I don't know if it's a cliff. I don't know what would stop this road from anywhere else but water. I don't know. But it's one of them roads you see that you can't go nowhere but straight. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. She dropped. I'm not going any further. She's not listening to the man because she's listening to God. She dropped. And Balaam's anger was kindled. And he smote the ass with a staff the third time. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. 
Do you see anywhere else in the Bible something about that mouth of the ass? Samson grabbed the jawbone of an ass and whipped him in the Philistines. And then out of that same jawbone of an ass, the water came out to, to give him thirst because he was dehydrated. What is that? I don't know, but someone else is study. And she said unto Balaam, what have I done? Unto, what's an ass sound like? <laughs> what does a donkey sound like? What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Animal abuse. What you hit me for? And Balaam said unto the ass, uh, it would be like, why am I having a conversation with this animal? Well, watch. I'll tell you why he did not. I'm talking to an ass here. Because thou hast mocked me. Now, I don't think the ass called them names and made fun of them. And yet, you see this. Let's go to Matthew 2.16. And this will just give you a definition of the Bible on what the scripture and the words are. Matthew 2.16, he says, you mocked me. Mock me, you think, yeah, yeah, you're stupid. What are you doing that for? Why are you preaching that? Why are you talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? Get out of here. Then Herod, Matthew 2.16, when he saw that he was mocked, did the wise men make fun of Herod? Absolutely not. What did the wise men do to Herod? What did the ass do to, to Baal? Did not obey. When you find where that child is, come and give me word so I can go worship him. They went another direction. He wanted that ass to go straight to Moab and that ass stopped. That ass crushed his foot. That ass went another way. Mocking is also when you don't do. Now, you know what's scary? And as I'm getting more and more into street, I, I street preach as a public ministry. It, it scares me that what these people don't do with God. Now, you ask my family, anybody who rightly has a public ministry, you get mocked. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Do you realize people, when you preach to them, when you tell them, you give them gospel tracts, you try to witness to them, do you realize they will stand before Jesus Christ one day and say, you're a mocker. Really? You made fun of my... My servants. Paul, why persecute us out of me? When it was Christians. And not only did you mock that man who told you about me and how to get saved. But you also mocked. You did not do what he told you to do. Ooh, isn't that a double charge? So mock scripture with scripture shows you. Is you have not done what you were supposed to do. Adam mocked God by eating that fruit. David mocked God by the adultery and killing of Bathsheba's husband. And we mock God when we do something that God says, don't you do that. We mock God when God says, do that, and we don't do it. That's interesting. Because thou hast mocked me, Numbers 22, 29, I would there, I would there were a sword in my hand. Grab it from an angel. <laughs> That's how I thought. Grab the angel's sword. I know, I'm just saying, just, hey, grab his sword. Because there's an angel right there holding a sword, and he doesn't even know it. If there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill it. That's why he doesn't realize he's talking to an ass. He is angry, he is mad. And he asked him to bail him, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Haven't I been faithful to you, Bail? Was I ever want to do so unto you? Have I ever rebelled against you as I've done today? And he talking to the other said, No, nay. Am I... Look at verse 22 at the end of the verse. It says two servants. Can you imagine these two guys looking at it? Like, what the heck is going on here? That guy's 
It's it's a cartoon. You see where animal talking, the serpent talked to Eve, the ass is talking to him. You see where they got it from cartoons? Those place down there in Orlando and California, it's nothing new with talking mice. I believe they were talking animals from Adam and Eve into the fall. You watch the Flintstones? How animals helped them, you know? The Picosaurus uh, garbage disposal and all that? Okay. Verse 31. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. He already opened the eyes of the, of the ass. Now he opens the eyes of Balaam. And here's this big angel standing there with a sword. You know what the Bible says about powers and principalities and the, star, and the angels? If he were to open up our eyes, we would freak out. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I don't know how well it is, but it, it, it is something to it. There are people who get the DTs from alcohol drinking so far into alcohol drinking. Man, they, they claim to see snakes and things all over this world. In the spirit world. See, when I was a little boy growing up, if you wanted alcohol, you got to go to the spirit shop. That's what package stores were called when I was a child. A spirit shop. So to open the eyes of Balaam. Why didn't just God just have Balaam killed? That would stop everything. Balaam is in rebellion, but Balaam was working with God and God was working with Balaam. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword drawn in his hand. <laughs> you want to whip that, that ass with a sword? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Later on, that angel is going to come with a sword coming out of his mouth. And he bowed down his head. That was Revelation 22, 8 and 9. About angel coming with a sword out of his mouth. Jesus. And fell flat on his face. I don't. I, we're going to read Lord willing about the sins of Balaam. Yes, there's sins of Balaam, but look at him. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? Now I'm going to say something. With what God just said to Balaam about smiting his ass three times, when it comes to animal abuse, Proverbs speaks about taking care of your animals. Don't worry about it. God is going to have you give answer to how you treat animals and how you treat others. He is calling Balaam on that animal abuse. So, I'd be careful... And I'm not, I love dogs. I have seen many horse races. And I'd be very careful when it comes to God when you got to whip that horse just to get to the finish line. And it has no purpose to be at the finish line. If he's got a whole bail to hit in the ass three times. Whoo-wee. Isn't the Bible great? That's why we don't have it in the public school system. Hmm. Smitten thy ass three times. And then, you know, you could be perverted. How people use the word ass. Behold. Watch this. I went out to withstand thee. I went to stop you. Verse 22. Because thy way is perverse before me. God is protecting him. And he's a Gentile. And he's not under the law. He is under conscience. And what his heart is telling him. And his heart is telling him now. Get down on that ground. You better worship that angel. And he asked, saw me. And turned from me three times. Unless... She had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. First Kings thirteen twenty eight. 
I love this one, this story. First Kings 1328. God does not ever cannot again will never lie ever. And when he's well, let's go to thirteen let's see what I say, thirteen twenty eight. Then I'll make the comment if I don't forget it. We're looking at two prophets here. Balaam and in thirteen twenty eight. Now the prophet we're looking at here, we're not gonna read the whole story. But God told him not to go back and do not eat or drink in the land, but go do what you had to do and leave. He didn't. He was lied by to by a false prophet. And God is angry for him for going back, and there's an ass in this picture. In verse 28, and he went and found his carcass, the, the prophet that did not obey God. Cast it away, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. And the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. So here is on the side of the road, if you were walking by, here is a dead prophet in the ground, dead. And a lion and an ass sitting there looking at him like, what do you think? I do a good job? Talking to God. And the ass would be probably talking to the lion or back to God and say, I wish he obeyed. And God said, that would have been you, jo uh, Jonah. Well, that would have been you, Balaam, several years later. And they both disobeyed God. And Balaam's still living. And Balaam did go against God by going with the men, but the men did not call him. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, now watch this, I have sinned, <laughs> for I know not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. That looks like a true repentance. Not only have I sinned, but I will go back. I will repent. Repent's going back. And yet he's going to do wrong. But look at what it is so far where we are. Had verse 35 on to the next couple, three chapters of the Bible. Balaam would be right. In the Lord. But he goes on. That's where the trouble is. And the angel of the Lord, verse 35, said to Balaam, Go with the men. But only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Bell went with the princes of Bala. And what the main story here is, you can't curse those people because I already said they're not cursed. And when Balak heard that Bell was come, he went out to meet him unto the city of Moab, which is the border of Arnon, which is the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Yeah, he did. Wherefore camest thou not unto me the first time? They told you, but they didn't even give you half the story. Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And that verse in Psalms that we did, 75 verse 6. Now that's going to be a downfall of Balaam right there. Because Balaam, I mean, Balak is going to promote Balaam with riches and honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have now any power have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth inspiration. There's the definition, Bible scholars, Bible Baptist churches, inspiration when God puts that mouth and that word in their mouth. 
that shall I speak. There are many students that have come out of Bible colleges that do not speak the word of God that came out of God. They changed it, adding, subtracting, footnoted it. And what we're going to see in 23 is he's going to say what God told him to say. 24, he does his own little thing. But in 23, God puts a word in his mouth and he comes back and tells them exactly what God said. And we'll look at Balaam later, where we're going. And Balaam went with Balak, Bala, and they came unto Kerchiv Uzatha. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, make an offering, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow. That Balak took Balaam and brought him up unto a high places of Baal. That's Balak. And his god is Baal, the sun god. That's where you lay naked at the beach in front of that turns you dark or red. Or gives you a sunburn. That's that Baal. Baal is the male deity. And he mates with Ashtoreth. And they make little babies. Gods, Roman, Greek mythology, uh, African mythology, and all that. That thence he might see the utmost part of the people. So he takes them on this very high hill, mountain, where Baal is, so he can look out and see the end of Israel. Not just Israel as a crowd of people, but he wants to see how far they go. See, here is Israel. You see how far they are? See it? See the last ones over there, the stragglers out there? You better curse them all. All of them. That's what I hired you to do. I want you to get the whole picture. Every one of them Israelites, that's who you're to curse. See them? See them out there? That's him. The kids out there playing in the fields, and you see everything? All of them. 